In the ancient world, there were numerous intriguing facts that have been largely forgotten, such as Pythagoras's creation of a cup that would spill wine on those who were too greedy, the Romans' use of urine for oral hygiene, and even the existence of whoopee cushions in ancient Rome. Pythagoras, known for his serious and peculiar beliefs, met his untimely demise when he chose to face his pursuers rather than trample through a field of beans. But he did have a playful side, as evidenced by his creation of a trick cup that would spill wine on unsuspecting drinkers. Pythagoras, the ancient Greek philosopher, had a clever solution for dealing with wine hogs. He invented a special cup that would spill all the wine if someone tried to fill it too much, teaching them a lesson about moderation. The Pythagorean cup may seem like a regular cup, but it has a sneaky trick up its sleeve. With a small hole at the bottom and an inverted U-shaped pathway inside, this cup turns into a siphon once the wine level reaches the top of the U-bend, draining all the wine until it's completely empty. In ancient Rome, it was common for people to clean their mouths with urine, as the poet Catullus once insulted a man named Ignatius for smiling too much, stating that his polished teeth only proved he was full of pee. The ancient Romans, lacking access to modern science, understood the benefits of ammonia and used urine as a source of this powerful cleaning agent. Ancient Romans found various uses for urine, using it in the laundry trade, hide tanning, agriculture, and even collecting it as a valuable commodity, leading to the prevalence of public chamber pots and vats for urination. The ancient Romans had some unusual medical practices, including using urine to treat diaper rashes, sores, burns, infections of the anus, chaps, and even scorpion stings, which may not sound appealing to us now but could have been effective due to the sterile properties of urine. In ancient Rome, the collection and resale of pea was a thriving business, with tradesmen even being granted special licenses and taxed accordingly, showing that the government's attention to profitable industries is nothing new. The ancient Greek Zypho sword, with its leaf-shaped blade and added mass towards the tip, was the preferred weapon of Greek hoplites for its cutting and thrusting capabilities in close quarters combat. The Spartans, known for their use of the Xiphos, had particularly short blades measuring only a foot in length, which they claimed was to instill aggression in their warriors by forcing them to draw closer to their enemies. The ancient Celts, with their fearsome reputation, dominated not only Gaul, but also most of Europe north of the Po and Danube river valleys, making them the greatest national threat to the Romans, who even warned their children about the Gauls. This fear was justified, as Gaulish tribesmen, led by Brennus, managed to defeat and sack Rome in 387 BC, a feat that no other foreigners would achieve for another eight centuries. During the 4th century BC, Celtic warriors' fearsome reputation as fierce and naked fighters led to high demand for their services as mercenaries, with their presence felt in various Greek kingdoms, Carthage, and even Hannibal's army during the Second Punic War. Celtic mercenaries were an important part of ancient Egypt's army, hired by King Ptolemy II Philadelphus to defend his throne and later used by Cleopatra to maintain control over Egypt. However, their attempt to overthrow Ptolemy resulted in their exile to a small island in the Nile where they died of starvation. Despite this, 
The Ptolemies continued to employ Celtic mercenaries due to their lack of local ties, which made them effective in suppressing uprisings by native Egyptians. The Gladius sword, copied from the ancient Celtiberians of Hispania, became the Romans' primary weapon for five centuries and played a crucial role in their conquests, victories, and the rise of ancient Rome's power. With various versions, but all sharing common characteristics such as being double-edged straight steel swords with a blade measuring around two feet in length and a V-shaped tip used mainly for close-quarter combat thrusting and lacking a crossguard. The gladius, carried by Roman legionaries, was a short sword with a tip projecting from the right side of their shield, allowing them to stab, slash, and hamstring their foes in close-quarters combat. Heliogabalus, the teenage Roman emperor, had a penchant for pranks that ranged from seating pompous dinner guests on ancient Roman whoopee cushions to instilling fear in people's lives. Heliogabalus took pranking to an extreme level by getting his dinner guests drunk and then surprising them with tamed lions, leopards, and bears in their bedroom the next morning. In the 6th century BC, King Idanthursus of ancient Scythia ruled over a nomadic tribal confederacy that struck fear into the neighboring settled lands for centuries, as they dominated the overland trade network connecting the Greeks, Chinese, Persians, and Indians. Their raids into the Middle East eventually led to the destruction of the Assyrian Empire and even a failed attempt by Darius I of Persia to conquer them. In an attempt to conquer the Scythians, King Darius the Sand of Persia led a massive invasion along the Black Sea coast, only to be outsmarted by the nomadic tribe's strategy of retreating into the vast steppe, leaving the Persian forces worn down and frustrated. Darius was left with no choice but to abandon his invasion and retreat, as the Scythians' defiant response revealed their unwillingness to fight and their allegiance only to their ancestors, Zeus and Hestia, telling Darius to go weep. Caligula, the infamous Roman emperor, was raised by his paranoid and cruel uncle, Emperor Tiberius, who referred to him as a viper being raised to harm the Roman people. Caligula, fueled by newfound freedom and power, indulged in excessive spending and hedonistic living, showcasing his disdain for a soothsayer's prediction by constructing a two-mile bridge across the bay and riding his horse across it, all while donning the armor of Alexander the Great, and finding amusement in the fact that he held the power to execute anyone with a simple gesture of his finger. During his reign, Caligula displayed his cruel and perverse nature by executing an entire section of the crowd at the Circus Maximus and engaging in incestuous relationships with his sisters, while also turning the imperial palace into a brothel and appointing his horse as consul. Caligula's downfall was not due to his eccentricities, like declaring war on the sea god Neptune and replacing deity heads with his own, but rather his offensive mockery of his own bodyguards, particularly Commander Cheria, which eventually led to his assassination. During a war between Egypt and Persia, the Egyptian eye doctor sent by Pharaoh Amasis to treat the Persian king Cambyses' sight instigated the war by advising Cambyses to ask for Amasis's favorite daughter, putting Amasis in a difficult position. During a time of political tension, 
Pharaoh Amasis attempted to deceive Cambyses by sending him the daughter of a former pharaoh, leading to the declaration of war and the involvement of Greek general Phanes, who ultimately aided the Persians in their invasion of Egypt. Pharaoh Pasamtik III sought gruesome vengeance on Phanes by executing his sons, draining their blood and mixing it with wine. But Phanes ultimately got his revenge by leading the Persian army and orchestrating the execution of Ksamtik. Iphialtes of Trachis, a member of ancient Greece's Malian tribe, infamously betrayed the Greeks during King Xerxes' invasion by revealing a secret path that allowed the Persians to outmaneuver the Spartans at Thermopylae. In a desperate attempt to hold off the vast Persian army, the Malians chose to collaborate with the enemy, while Sparta's king Leonidas and his small group of heavily armed Greeks bravely defended the narrow pass at Thermopylae, ultimately defeating the Persians and securing a legendary last stand. The Persians were trapped at the Thermopylae Pass until Ephialtes, a traitor, revealed a secret mountain path to King Xerxes, leading to the downfall of the Greek position and the heroic sacrifice of King Leonidas and his 300 Spartans. Ephialtes, despised throughout history, never received his promised rewards as the Persian invasion ultimately failed. He met a tragic end, hunted down and killed by the Spartans, who sought justice for his betrayal. Did woolly mammoths exist during the construction of the Great Pyramid by the ancient Egyptians? Contrary to popular belief, woolly mammoths did not become extinct at the end of the Ice Age, but rather coexisted with humans and even witnessed the construction of the Great Pyramids by the ancient Egyptians. Believe it or not, Woolly mammoths were still roaming around until 5,600 years ago, long after the pyramids were built and human civilization was well underway. The popular belief that slaves built the pyramids is incorrect, as evidence suggests that paid laborers were involved in the construction and graffiti inside the Great Pyramid supports this notion. The belief that the Great Pyramids were constructed by slaves was debunked when archaeologists discovered the tombs of the builders, revealing that they were actually well-paid laborers from poor families who were honored with burial near the sacred pharaohs. To put it in perspective, Cleopatra lived closer to our time than she did to the construction of the Great Pyramids, which were built over 2,500 years before she was born. Shi Huang, the ruthless ruler of ancient China, ascended to power as a teenager and solidified his reign by eliminating palace plotters and conquering neighboring states ultimately declaring himself the first emperor of a unified China. In order to unify his empire, Qin Shi Huang standardized currency, weights, and measures, introduced legalism as a strict system of government, and abolished feudalism to establish a centralized bureaucratic government based on merit. He also controlled the nobility through pensions and fancy titles, transforming them into dependents and courtiers while eliminating their aristocratic titles and ranks. With unchecked power and the resources of an entire empire, Qin Shi Huang launched massive projects, including his tomb with 700,000 workers and the Great Wall of China, all fueled by his megalomaniacal ambitions. Qin Shi Huang's obsession with immortality led him to fund searches for a life elixir and even consume daily mercury pills, which ultimately drove him to madness and caused his untimely death at 49. 